So for all my gel blaster modding that I've been doing that requires soldering and some electronics work, I've been using a large soldering station, which is a good quality soldering station, but it's too expensive for someone who just wants to mod gel blasters. So if you just want an inexpensive soldering iron to do these gel blaster mods, pick up this 12 to $14 soldering iron that has digital temperature control, pretty decent. I'm gonna be unboxing it and testing it out and see if it's good enough for these mods. In addition to the soldering iron itself, it actually comes with a bunch of stuff, which is quite a bit for $14, however much it was. There's an assortment of tips in addition to the one that's already in the soldering iron. You get six different tips. Looks like this one may be very similar, but a little bit thinner. So you get a super thin one, medium thin, a little bit thicker, then these like bevel, flat tip, and something that looks more like a knife. There's a stand, although I heard the stand is pretty horrible and I can't even get it to stay up. Let's see. Whoops. Looks like you have to put it into this position to get it to stay up. Yeah. So what's weird about this stand is that this looks like the storage position, but then when you want to use it, you can't just leave it there. You have to like pull it out, put it in this position, and then this is the position you can use it. Set your soldering iron on. It comes with some rosin paste flux. This is hard stuff. Almost like the rosin you'd use to put on the bow of a violin. And you actually get a little bit of solder. Who knows if this is lead free or not. I almost missed this in the box. You get a little sponge for cleaning off the tip. So you wet the sponge with some water, and then it fits in this little area here. And you can use that for cleaning the tip, although it's pretty far down in there. Overall, really not bad for 12 to $14 as long as it works. The cable for it is pretty stiff. It's going to make your soldering iron kind of move around. Maybe not stay in the stand that well, but it's not terrible. Okay, let's plug it in and check it out. It's like 320C is the default temperature. Every time you push, it goes up by one degree C. Let's see if you hold, then it starts to go up faster. So it's kind of slow to adjust different temperatures. So to change the display from C to F, it says to push both of the buttons while plugging this in, which is gonna be a little bit tricky if you've only got two hands and you're plugging into an extension cord. Okay. So now it gives you the option of degrees C or degrees F. The white button switches back and forth between degrees C or degrees F. I'm gonna go to F because I'm more used to that. Now you push both and hold both buttons. There we go. And now it's in the temperature adjust mode. So I usually solder right around 600 F is general te good temperature for soldering. First thing, I'm gonna tin these wires with some solder. Worked perfectly fine for that. Now I'm going to tin the contacts on this LED strip. Worked well for that. Yeah, so this soldering iron is perfectly suitable for doing gel blaster mods like this and very inexpensive, easy to use. It was super easy to solder these wires onto the end of the LED strip. And then I'm gonna solder the other end of the wires onto these contacts here. Shouldn't be a problem. So if you wanna start doing your own gel blaster mods and involve some soldering like this, buy an inexpensive soldering iron and it'll make your job super easy. The soldering iron does have an auto off feature. So it turns itself off after about five minutes, but it also seems to turn itself back on when you handle it. So you don't even have to push a button to turn it back on. That's good for a hobby soldering iron, but if you were doing production work, you would want a soldering iron that doesn't shut down on you all the time like that. But this soldering iron is not meant for production work. It's meant for hobby work. 